Oh, thanks for everybody who made the brave and courageous journey out here. There's a, what is it, freezing rain and black ice everywhere on the streets today. So we got a couple calls from everybody saying that they would, uh, some had actually turned back. It was so dangerous. They were slipping and sliding. How many experienced that this morning? Woo, whoa, God, God save, God protect us today. Let's give God some glory for that. Let's give God some glory. You protect us. All right, let's go into this word today. Let me switch this real quick. And I want to go to 2015, Breaking the Science. How many know it's time to break the science? All right, yeah. yeah. Very important, very important. Now, let me get this. And let's look at Mark 8, 31. Let's read Mark 8. Oh, the kids will go. Okay, kids, yeah, follow us. Let's get loose. You got Sunday school. Have a great time, okay? But let's look at Mark 8 today. And let's read this together. 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him. Look how notice that he took him. Peter took him. He took him and began to rebuke him. Can you imagine taking Messiah? <laughs> taking him over here and rebuking him? I got some nerve right there. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. That is some incredible word. Oh my Lord, that is some powerful word. I mean, just look at that. It's just packed, jam-packed with how we as people, what we as people must seek. We should not be able, even if we gain the whole world, we should not sell our soul. Amen. Amen. Even if we're offered the kingdoms of the world, we should not sell our integrity. How come there's no amens? Amen. <laughs> all right, here we go. Hey, all right, we got some Holy Ghost people today. <laughs> you know, we usually go into the evils of the world, and especially on this year's Shemitah, the Super Shemitah, Seven Cycle Shemitah, Four Tetra Blood Moon, you know, uh, Super Blood Moon, we know warnings have been made on America. That's been made clear by prophetic voices in the body of Christ. That the harbingers are real. America is being warned. But in the time of warning and in the time of desecration, in the time of where the people forget God, it is what is the it's so important. It's key that the people of God return to Him. Yes. We have to hold on to God even more seriously because in the time of tribulation is a time where our faith is really tested. It's a time where we, there will be separation from the wheat and the shaft. There will be separation from the hull and the stock. 
There will be separation. There will be a clarifying. Who has faith? Who stands in faith in Christ? Who will be bought off by money, power, and who will gain the world and sell their soul? This comes clear in the time of tribulation. You know, there's so much craziness in the world, and as everybody knows, we cover that every week because we don't want to live in delusion. We, we don't want to be fear mongering, but we don't want to live in delusion thinking everything's great in the world and there's no evil. We do look at evil. We do face it. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. We know evil. We have to know how predators look in order so that the body of Christ can stand against them. So it is important for us to look at it. I don't want to go into it today, honestly. Uh, you know, we've been going into it quite seriously every week. But today I don't want to go into it too much. I want to, I want to share my heart a little bit. Because I feel, you know, now is 2015. And it's the third year of now Father Sunma anniversary coming up. It's the Super Shemitah. It's the Four Blood Moon Tetrad. It's a time where silence must be broken now. Yes. The truth has to come. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I'm not here to condemn or to put down. But we have to see. I love, I have, it's, it's amazing to be in a situation where you're a public figure. Because you have people who know nothing about your life or your relationships wanting to comment on those relationships, yes. telling you what to do in those relationships. Oh, and then, it's an interesting reality of how they like to be the judge and the juror of your life right. and your relationships yeah. with key people in your life. Right. As if they're God Almighty. Right. And I have certain, we've certainly experienced it. It's actually been a, a, a blessing. Because we went from, before Father passed, we went from, you know, the ones who are crowned by Father as his successor. We went from the members saying, oh, you're so you're the sweetest of all the children and blah, blah, blah. And now you're the, you're just the same. You're, you're bad. You are such a betrayer. And we get all this. And we got mocked, we got scorned, we became outcast. People don't even know what's the situation, but still they want to jump in and play referee. That's right. Always we have this, the middleman syndrome. Middleman. Wanting to come in and monkey around. That's right. Because in the chaos, there is political opportunity yes. and Ooh. predators like that uh-huh. opportunity. Uh-huh. We look at how that works in the world. We look at how the bankers do that with the wars. We look at how that happens in reality in the world today with conglomerates. How they use political power by puppets, by politicians to manipulate the public. <coughs> but what was so fascinating is as we came and became mocked, people think we're crazy, conspiracy theorists, even though all the rational, intelligent evidence points to not honest governance. Still, there is a denial that these things are, that evil exists. And we're in a period of two and a half years of being mocked, cursed, disappointment, shame on you, all this puerile activity, lumping us with other people in our, you know, even in our siblings. We're different. But of course they love to lump us as if we stole a billion dollars, which we didn't. We gave everything away, everything back. You see, we behave quite differently from the leadership. That's right. We behave very unlike the norm. That's right. Because when we were offered and I had I had give, father had given me the crowns. He had clarified that I will take his position in the future, not as Messiah, but as the leader of the church. But when the situation of after his death, and we had to see what we had to see, 
And we had to witness what we had to witness with our own eyes. And we had to be, we, we were trying to be bribed to go along with it. I had leadership, the whole core leadership signed a petition sent privately to me saying, go along with it. It's going to be your kingdom anyways. You're the successor. You have the, you, it's your crown. You have the, you have the whole kingdom. Just go along with it. And then when your mom goes to transition to the spirit world, then change, what do you need to change? Okay, so this is your spiritual guidance to me. So this is coming from the spiritual leaders of the church. Okay, this is the spiritual guidance that they give to the person that father crowned. This is what they tell me. Betray your father for political temporary power. Keep the money. Keep the billions of dollars of assets you are in control of legally. And when your mother passes away, just wait for your mom to pass away. And when she passes away, do what you want. So you're telling me as a spiritual leader, you're telling me to betray my father, and then you're telling me to betray my mother and wait for her to die. This is the advice you give me. This is the advice you're going to give me. This is the advice I was given. That's not advice. That's desecration. That's insanity. Any normal person who sees that will say, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? I'm not going to sell out on my dad. And I'm not going to wait for my mom to die so I sell out on her. The level of, the, when I even reflect on that, the level of predatory politicking, the, 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 what is worshipped in the higher church hierarchy? What is it? Obviously it's not God. Obviously it's not Father. Obviously it's not Jesus. Obviously it's maintaining political power. Uh-oh. Obviously, it's controlling the money supply. Uh And this is so ironic because this is what we've been talking about on the meta scale with what happens actually in the world. Uh See, this is exactly what happens in the world at large. The predatory class gets to power and as they get to power, They control the money supply. And we've talked about this so many times with so many different studies. Then they will buy self-serving politicians who will then pay off provocateurs, who will then shift public opinion so that the masses, they will spin the message so the masses take their political side to their political advantage. We've seen this. I never studied politics before. I'm, I'm a Buddhist, I was a Buddhist monk. I was trained in you know, monastic training. I didn't, that's, we're not supposed to study those kind of things. So I also thought politics is crazy. You know, we, Spiritual people cannot think of that. And as I came into relation with, with Jesus and the Bible, there's also two strains in Christianity too. Some say we have to just be spiritual, talk about only the spirit stuff. Well, look at Jesus. He kicked out the money changers. He kicked out the bankers from the synagogues. He challenged the brood of vipers. He challenged the, the authoritarian religious structures of the day. He did all of that. You see, every sermon, every study that we've done going into the political reality, what's fascinating is that it mirrors the church reality. Every type of predatory system of control that's used on mass population in the world at large was also occurring 
in our church. And you have very good people. Like what they call the good Nazis. Like you have people who just went along with it. They're good. They just, they're, hey, I don't think it was that bad. I mean, he's not, I mean, when I saw him speaking, he was like, you know, he was like passionate, you know, and he's not killing Jews or he's not doing this. And you have good, not, they're, they're good people. They have grandmas, they have children, they go home and have dinner with their kids and they, 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 they watch dramas and cry and go to movies and whatever they do. They're normal people. But the political predatory elite can control them. And this is what was so amazing. This is why I realized Father led me to study these politics, the systems of control. And to expose them, to challenge them, to bring them into the public, stand against them. Because that is exactly what it is, was not only Toxic, making the church toxified in the culture, but was destroying it from within. You know, coming out here to the wilderness where we're, you know, uh, in the midbar, <laughs> uh, outside, in the, outside in the wilderness, you know, bushcrafting and Training together outside, being a presence of God. The midbar is the place in Hebrew. Midbar comes from dabar, and dabar means the word of God. So the midbar is the place where the word is heard. It's the place where we can get away from the craziness of the palace courtiers wow. and the political structures and establishment that tries to control our faith our thinking, our relationship with God. It's a place where you can go into nature, into the wilderness to commune, to feel that anointing of God present there with His people in the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, with the pillar of fire and the pillar of smoke. We're in the presence of God. Oh, yes. Brother Lloyd, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. 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 But we got all this, oh my goodness, we had to see so much. Unbelievable. I remember one time when, when I was the head of the Korean church, well, the world church, and the Korean church, we had to, a father ordered to bring in a leader. So, we brought him in. And so we were actually talking about his compensation. Because that's a serious thing. And I remember saying, okay, what is your comp... And so you have to share with us what your conversation is. And I'm not, I don't have to name names, but this guy was taking five different salaries in excess of six figures each. And he's supposed to be a humble public servant. And he goes in front of the members and says, ooh, I started my public mission. When I was whatever, how old? You're taking five different salaries. <laughs> to make half a million dollars a year after church. And you're being a public servant, going for I am a public servant. Yes, I care for you. I am here as the mediator between true parents and you. The humble, faithful servant. And we said, this is, you can't do this. I'm the world president. I am the world president. And you are making $50,000 a month. I don't make that in a year. Okay, and it's kind of like, you know, Father made me the world president. You're supposed to be the Korean president. You actually should be making less. Not $50,000 a year. And this is what we had to see. This was, of course, before Father passed. But when Father passed, that's when we saw the real colors. That's when we saw the real truth. That's when we saw what people were really about. I remember being on a bus right after Father passed. On a bus. 
and the leader gets on the speakerphone, because he's ordered to. And he comes up on the speakerphone and says, Father told us, commanded us, that we must not even change one word of his scriptures or tradition. But I think there's some problematic things. And so I agree to be on the committee to redact everything. No. So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I should have just videotaped this statement. Yeah. Because you just said, Father said, don't do. And now you're saying, you will do. You just said, Father said, don't do. And you just said, next sentence, you will do. I'm sitting there, think, grabbing my hair, which I had, then, and yanking it out. You just said, Father commanded, don't do. You are now saying, to do. Uh -oh. I mean, if you cannot see, if you cannot be uncomfortable with that, I don't know. You know, I don't know what you what you are. Because when I see that, all I see is politicking, baby. All I see is, oh, I want to keep my money stream coming to me. Is what I see. What I see is, I oh, father passed away, now he's ever over. But now, my chance to get more power money. That's what we see. And so of course, of course we will not help that. I mean, you just said it with your own mouth. Father said, don't do. Now you're saying, let's do. To me, that's insanity. That's right. To me, that is disrespecting the God. If you believe that He's the Lord's commander, and if you believe that He commanded, what can you say? Oh, he, in the same sentence, He said, don't do, but we have to do. How are you going to explain that to Him? How aren't you going in front of the members talking about you're the spirit world? Aren't you going in front of members who are, you know, they're, they're, they're artistic. They're not politicians. They don't know the bureaucratic structure. They're not in the hierarchy of politics. They're just going about their busy day and they love true parents. They love God. Aren't you going around telling them about the spirit world and this and that and your ancestors and all this? How can you talk about the spirit world when you are telling them we're going to do something that the king said not to do and if you believe he's the king in heaven and on earth then when you go to the spirit world which you're talking about who do you think is going to be the king there uh -oh. who do you think is the king right. there is a king in the kingdom folks there's a king <laughs> and I love my queen. That's why I told her there's a king. Not, I'm not, I'm not me. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we're the only ones because we love and we want to save the kingdom and we want to save the queen is we won't just bite the bullet like people around her want money from her. And we will tell her, the king said this. He commanded us this. So we can't do that. See, it's so funny how people want to jump in. And I've been, I've been silent on this issue the last two and a half years while being mocked and scorned and great fun of and hated. That, that's fine. That's, that's, people have, that's their... That's something they're going to have to deal with God in. That's not between me or the public, or me or members. I 
already went through the reality. Me and Kuchum are the sons. Father anointed in 2012, June 5th, in Las Vegas. Father did the Sakchawani Jokshik, the fourth dimension entrance ceremony. This was after he crowned me. This was after he made me world president. This was after he made me responsible for everything. Above and beyond every, any leader in the history of the church. And not because I wanted it. I didn't ask for it. I never. How can you make Father do something like that? If you know Father, you know how powerful he is. You can't hoodwink him or force him to make you a crown, crown you. He decides what he's going to do. I can't make him do anything. I can't even make him eat breakfast if he doesn't want it. <laughs> How am I going to make him force him to put a crown on my head three times on two different continents? It's, it's just retarded. It's totally inane. If you think about it rationally, it's a totally inane, unthinking, uneducated stipulation which has absolutely no evidence. And that's why I realized coming to the, the wilderness, we lost everything. We gave everything. When we were ordered, to put our petition down, we put them down. We didn't try to steal assets. We didn't try to steal money, even though they've been people they've been using provocateurs to lump us with other people who stole money. You see, that's kind of mean. That's right. Yeah. That's very mean. That's not true. Because, like, uh, they're saying we stole like thieves when we actually did not when we actually gave everything back. That's very, very mean and very naughty. And it's so interesting because when we come out here and dissect the political machine and nature of how leaders in world positions keep power, I just realized, wow, that is exactly what is happening in the church. Same systems, provocateurs, or provocateurs, people who are subsidized by the people in control of the money supply who can manipulate the people who are controlling the money supply, use the provocateurs against anybody, even the one father, even the one father crowned. And even the ones that, like myself, didn't steal anything in the movement. Throw on us and dump on us all of what is known as lumping. Lump us with a different, with a group. And the provocateurs know what they're doing. They're friends with the leadership. They're friends. They're many times paid in organizations that are subsidized by those politicians who want to who have the inroads to people who control the money supply. And this is what's so pitiful. Because as we look into what the world and how the world is controlled by a quote elite class, we see that same situation happen even in the churches. And it's, honestly, it's not only our church. You can look in most of the centralized hierarchical churches around the world and you'll see this. Total non-transparency. You know, that's why when we were in leadership, we forced all the minister unions, all the group unions, open the books, transparent, everything members should see. We do that here at Sanctuary Church. All of you have sat in on Financial Transparent Day. Because it's part of what we believe in. It's part of what we brought to the church. And when you do something like that against an establishment that's used to 
politicking and controlling money supply and using provocateurs to help their position, you will get condemned. They will hate you. Oh, I remember, oh goodness. Everybody on a bandwagon to get rid of my brother, Hoop John. <laughs> this was the first time in church history he was bringing transparency to his organizations, to the businesses. For the first time, he was making them accountable. Stop saying subsidies are, are you know, income. <laughs> if you're a business. He was bringing real transparency and leadership. He was holding them accountable. He was defunding them if they showed that they were misusing public money. Boy, he made lots of enemies. <laughs> lots of enemies. But so many members, especially the ones we worked with in Korea, because we were mainly in Asia, in Korea and in Japan, thousands of members saw what we did. And they saw we're not there for some stupid position of power. Kuk Chung was working pro bono. I was just there and Father started putting me in a position that we just wanted to do ministry. But I feel, I don't know if this is how everybody feels, but this is how I feel. I feel this course is God's grace. I really do. I remember when I had to basically kidnap back my own son from the palace, being cursed, 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 and I'm stealing my own son, and I'm taking my own son away. And I remember when he got here, sweetest little boy, sweet, such a sweet child, then what, not eight years old? So he's a good kid, he's answering. But he gets here and he can't even tie his shoelaces. He gets here and he, he doesn't even want to jump in the lake. He says it's dirty. The lake is dirty. I'm not going to jump in. Where's the Olympic sized swimming pool? I mean, he didn't say that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Where's the indoor swimming pool with the, uh, the uh, what is it, the, 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 the opening windows above? Uh, this lake has moss in it or whatever, lichen, some kind of seaweed. Dirty. Three days later, he's jumping in the lake, catching salamanders, swimming around, getting money thrown one on his siblings. This is how kids should be ready. Kids should grow up in nature. This is what Father was saying. I will return to nature, he said. When I saw that boy, the palace boy, Throwing mud at his siblings and getting mud pancaked in the face. I said, praise God! That was alive! Because he's saving that child. Yeah. When you are in that environment where you don't have anybody who actually loves you, loves you unconditionally, not for how are you going to help me look good so I can be elevated in my position. Or not for, oh shoot, don't cry in front of parents because you're going to make me look bad. I may get fired. And it's not like those people are bad people, but that's the system, it's the culture that they're in. They're just trying to survive. They're actually good people. But when you grow up in that person, I don't care who you put in. You can put in every one of your children. If you, I don't care who it is. You, if you're a child, you go in there you will come out a demon. You will come out a demon. You will come out entitled. You will come out with the emperor with the no clothes on. You will come out expecting everybody just parade around you because you showed up or whatever. You will become a heartless, cold person who doesn't know how to do anything with his own hands. You will become somebody that is so overwhelmed and consumed with your public image that you will have no real, real identity. No real integrity that you will actually hold to even though you lose everything of your public identity. 
you will become a total masquerader. I don't care who is put in there. That's what you become. That's why Father always went to the Midbar, to the wilderness. Every other day he was in the wilderness, facing the elements, coming into the purity. Out, he didn't like the palace. I remember we would be flying from America to Korea. The first thing he would say is, oh, we're the, we have lunch prepared at the palace. No, we go to, come on up, go. We're going to the island. Now we got to go ocean fishing. I just got back on a 15-hour flight from uh, you know, America. I want to see my children. And now we have to go ocean fishing with waves 12 feet high. It's not a vacation, folks. I tell, let me tell you that. It's not a vacation. <laughs> If you're any, any bit of a person, it's quite torturous. <laughs> to be out that, all the time in the wilderness like that. But you know, it's interesting because as far past, I find myself so magnetically attracted to the wilderness. So magnetically attracted. And there are many things we want to talk about directly. But I feel it's important to contextualize what's happening. I think God is giving us grace. He's giving us the opportunity to step out. See, loyalty to Father doesn't mean loyalty to the church hierarchy. This is what people mess up. Because they've been conditioned to believe that loyalty to Father means loyalty to the memos that come down, or loyalty to the church hierarchy, whatever the church leader says, or your able leader says. But what if, what if you're faced with a situation where he is saying something, Father commanded, don't do. Now we're going to do. What will you do? What would you do? What would you do if you had all the power all the money, all the positions, and you are faced with that reality now confronting you. You're going to keep this and go with it, or you're going to throw this away, be scorned, be mocked, be crucified. You're going to care about what the members think of you, or you're going to care about Father thinks of you. You're going to care what members expect of you? Or are you going to care what Father expects of you? Especially if you put a crown here three times. That's kind of a big responsibility. And I, I can't talk about this. If I said anything like this as Father passed, Already everybody had made up their mind that it's going to get better. It's going to be, we're going to have a glorious end, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Why are you such a party pooper? Why are you such a negative person? Why are you not giving anybody a chance? No. See, we have morals. We are men that cannot be bought off by money or power. You see, we are men who believe in our father and love our mother. So we're not going to betray him and wait for her to pass away so we can betray her. The level of artistic, exploding emotion that we had to endure. While all these people want to come in and, you know, throw their judgment in. was a great experience. It showed us we can't rely on anybody. Anybody but Christ. We can't rely on any human being. But we can only rely on Christ. He is our love. He is our foundation. You see, now it's not time 
We've done what we've we've tried and begged and tried. You you try going into North Korea or some communist totalitarian regime. And you try going in there trying to convince them to change their structure. Let's see how good you do. You, you try going in there. Well, why can't you just be loving? Why don't you just go in there and change it? Uh, why, don't, why don't you try going in there and changing what you think everybody else can change? Okay? Because when you're faced with the reality of money supply controllers, when you're faced with the reality of the bought-off politicians and the provocateurs and the subsidized organizations and the political strings that are tied in all throughout, you quickly realize you ain't as bad as you thought. Or you ain't as heroic or powerful as you thought. I believe Father gave us this time. He freed us. He freed us from those things. We, we had response. We had to choose. We, I'm telling you, for we had a choice. I could have went along. I could have played along. I could have chosen the easy route, political easy. Members wouldn't hate me. Members wouldn't curse me. Members wouldn't scorn me. But I don't. I'm, you know, I was a monk for 10 years. I'm not going to buckle to your, the political pressure that they try to create. I'm going to do what in my heart I feel is right. right. And if you say out of your mouth, Father well, said don't do it, and now you say do, for me that's wrong. It's very clear that's wrong. I can't do that. And I won't do it. No matter how much money you put in front of me, no matter how many guilt trips you try to put me on, I saw what I saw. I am my own man. You're not the one crowned three times. Father gave me a huge responsibility because he trusts us. Amen. You didn't get crowned as the true Abel and the true Cain, which Father did on 2012, 6, June 5th, with me and Kukcho, declaring for the first time in the fam true family, there is Cain and Abel unity, working for the glory of, the, of God. And in the same declaration, Saying that now true prayer's work is done because they've been victorious with Cain and Abel? You didn't receive that anointing. I mean, he said Father announced that three months before he passed. Because he knows, he knew, we're not going to get bought up by money. You can't buy us off by peer pressure. You can't make us do things because put it by putting us on guilt trips. It doesn't work. Because we actually believe in who He is. We actually want to be men of integrity. We don't want to gain the world if we have to sell our soul and be a puppet to money controllers. That is not what I am living for, folks. I hope it's not what you're living for. Amen? Amen. That is not what the body of Christ is living for. We live for one thing alone. We live to serve God. Yes. Even if we are faced with so many difficult decisions, we live to seek to glorify God. Yes, we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I said that all the time. I'm a sinner before everybody. I said that before Father crowned me. And we saw it with our own eyes. But I feel now in 2015, the truth has to now come out slowly, step by step. Because we warned. We warned that if, because we actually believe he is the King of Kings. And we actually believe that if you directly go against exactly what he said not to do, you're kind of going to get judged. There's going to be trouble. And it's not going to be us that are the judges. It's going to be God. God is going to do it. And I just feel now 2015, 
you know, as we launch this new year, you know, the final year of the Shita, I don't want to... So many come to us trying to seek an answer. We're not the answer. We're not going to give you the answer. Especially if you already have a prepared answer you want to hear. <laughs> We're going to tell you the truth. We're going to do what is in our conscience. You didn't throw away everything. You didn't throw away all the positions and all the crowns and everything. But we did. Because, not because we're great, because it's what a normal person should do. It's what a normal person should do. It's not because we're some kind of great hero. It's because it's what normal people and children should do when they're faced with that kind of decision. You should do that. You should not buy out, be bought out, and sell your soul. You guys see the sign on the uh, board right now? Oh my god, say something. <laughs> It's a mother, but I guess he wants to call it Oma. <laughs> um, yeah, just you know, I hear my husband saying about father, and I that is so true. We can't even, you know, make our uh, you know, we can't even ask father, father, can you is the fundo case over, you know, noon time? Can you have a breakfast? We can't even make him eat. That's so true. I I had a really good laugh at that. Oh, goodness. You know, from very young age, yeah, uh, from very young age, you know, I, I'm, I'm a unificationist because I was born and raised in a unification church. And the relationship that I had with the Father is, you know, he's just praying in the, in the big rally, you know, and then there's a hundred, hundred thousands of people are captured in the stadium, and I can see Father from far away, and it's just a little dot. And that was my relationship with your parents. And I'm sure most of you had that experience too. And as I entered through, through family, I couldn't believe my eyes that they are sitting right in front of me. And I saw always their, their smiling face, their, their presence only in the picture and only in the calendar. And they a little bit moved. I'm like, I was in starstruck kind of. <gasps> they can actually move! <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. You know, that's how I was. That's how I was. <coughs> but as I, as we, you know, even though I was in true family, I was in, in, in true, I, I was right next to true parents. I did not have a relationship with true parents, with true father, as a Messiah. And that's a very different relationship. And as I study Bible, you know, we learn about Jesus and how he spoke this, we memorize it, how he crucified. He went through crucifixion because of my sin. I realized, oh, wow. Yes. This is the relationship we had months that day with your father. How much do we know about father? That is a really important question we have to ask ourselves because I only experienced father when he actually had a lady in congregation. But what did Father really go through? <coughs> you know, Father, we, we often talk about seven death and resurrection. And when we call each seven death and resurrection, Father, within five years, Father was imprisoned 
overcomings. Korea, 1945, it was independent finally under Japanese occupation. But it was uh, 1945, August 15, but only about 1945, father was in prison in Gyeonggi Police Depart Department. And 1945, I said 1945 August, Korea was in the, Korea was finally free from Japanese occupation. 1945 October, father was imprisoned again in Jeonju. And 1946, father was imprisoned again in Pyongyang. And 1948, 1948, father was imprisoned again in Hyungnam prison. See, within five span of years, father was in prison five, four, four times. And then he went through that many tribulations. But you know what? You know, recently I, I uh, learned about father's life course again. And then that really, you know, inspired me. Because I can see father's life course through Jesus' life course. And I heard that father was uh, at the time when he was in prison like four times. He actually read uh, um, the book of Romans a lot. So you know, I last night I actually read through the Romans and one passage that really captured my mind and and thinking that wow. This is must have father read when he was going through that much tribulation. And I'd like to share this with you. It's a uh, book of Roman 116. It says, uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God yes. that brings salvation yes. to everyone who believes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you heard many things that we went through. Yes, I was in this place to blame everybody. You know, and this is not right. And I'd be very self-righteous and whatever. But one thing we have to, we should not forget is who is the King of Kings? Right. And where the salvation lies? We truly know that. And the answer is very clear. And the existent purpose for us being here is very clear. And we live here to glorify His name. Because one day we have to face it. Because one day we have to be accountable for our life. Brother and sister, that's what we are living. We are living our life to glorify His name. Our Christ, who keep us salvation. Yes. Wow. Yes, I know. I mean, please, please, stop sending me messages <laughs> saying, go help the queen. You see, because you're not the one who calls and gets no answer, see. You're not the one who goes there year after year and gets kicked out and be met with 50 guards in front of the palace where your father crowned you his successor. You see, you didn't go through that. You don't go through that. You see. So you actually don't have a right to try to play judge right. in that relationship. Right. So the real key now is the you. You, we save the queen. We must save the queen from all the political structures around. I can't do it. The world membership should not. It's not going to do anything. Writing me messages telling me how the church is collapsing. I already understand that. We already warned that that would happen. Okay? See, we've been quite clear 
that that would happen from the beginning. Although you from, you may from the outside see it happening, but we see we've been we told the leadership from the beginning. So it's time now for the body of Christ, the world church. You want something about it? You have to. You have to, free mother. Don't come to me. I can't do it. I'm a son. You understand? I'm not her husband. I'm her son. I I respect her when I see her. I tell her what I have to tell her, but I do it respectfully, on my knees and in honorific language in Korean. So please don't come to me telling me I disrespect my mother, because I don't. <laughs> and if you have not seen me with my mother, you honestly have no right to comment on it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because when I go before my queen, I go on bended knee and I speak to her in kingly honorifics. But I tell her what I must. saying anything about it. But our hearts are torn. Things that we had to see. Things that we had to endure. We would have never gone through it if it wasn't your spirit. And in reality, Father, we know that it's absolutely nothing compared to what you have gone through. What you have gone through to liberate God's heart. The seven deaths, resurrections, torture, mocked, scorned, crucified. We're not comparing. But we know that we only can hold on to you. You're the only one who can sort us out. Provocateurs, politicians, will definitely not be the people who will sort us out. It's only you, God. We come before you. We throw in all positions, all power away. We come to you as our king. We ask of you to give us guidance. And we will be patient. We will not push you to do things that your timing says not to. We will be patient. Father, in this dark time where we are in a valley worldwide, we are writhing under the collective pain of our entire family. That's real. We know that only holding on to you, grabbing you, trying to understand your word, getting back to scripture, digging deeper into you is the answer. We know that there's going to be judgment. We know there's gonna, this is a super sweet. But the safest place in judgment is not a physical place. But it's in you, Father. We pray for the day that all can come before you as a king. Lift you up. Exalt you. All of us, from the queen to the lowest person the most humble that we can come together all in front of you as sinners sinners saved by your blood and grace sinners saved by you sinners 
were made perfect through you. We've become an arrogant body, Father. So self-righteous. We don't think we need to repent. It's all hinginess, fault. It's all this one. We've become an arrogant body. What about all of us turn and repent? What about all of us come before you and say, Father, you're the king. I'm going to obey what you command. So simple. But Father, it becomes so complicated with me. Guide us. Give us wisdom. The things that we warned, the splits, the schisms that we warned of, they already have happened and are happening. Only you can sort it out. It's time now for us as men and women to realize our total inadequacy. To sort this out. It's time to surrender before you and to know that you and only you can sort this out. Even though we are princes and princesses, we still must be respectful to our queen. She is not our object partner. She is your object partner. You are the absolute subject. Only you can guide us here. Father, we pray that in 2015 you would open up a new anointing. A new anointing where we can start at the basics. We start with realizing that we're sinners saved by grace. Unboastful of ourselves, boastful of you. We believe that's the only way in this year and with the judgment that has come. We pray, Father, and we want to give you all the glory in this trying time as we bring out what is tearing everybody's heart apart. Conversing, conversing and just talking about won't do anything. We know that. But we're asking you Asking you to lead your people, to guide us, to chastise us if we need it. Yes, please. That is your love. Yes, that is your love. Be wroth with us if we need it. That is your love. We understand. We love you and we need you. And you are the answer. We give you all the praise and glory. Praise and all names. And in your precious name we pray. Let's give God some praise, everybody. I want to end real quick with Chen Sing Young 1231. Let's speak together. A true filial son is the one who obeys. A true loyal subject, even when being chased and put to death by traitors, never calls his king in kingdom. A true loyal subject is a person of integrity and loyalty who sheds tears with a sorrowful heart and wishes his king a long life, even when persecuted by treacherous courtiers to the point of death. This is absolute obedience. The only way to bring about success through absolute obedience is the way of true love. Amen. Let's give us a prayer.